Bienvenidos nuevamente a Welcome once again. We will now continue with the last part of the Public Policy Forum. I hope you were, could grab a coffee. And before giving the floor to a moderator, I would like to invite you to stay on right through to the end because we have a presentation on validation of abuse contact by Janina Pensky. And I'll give the floor to Ariel and Thomas. Thank you very much. In the presentation we made at the beginning, we spoke about innovation in this forum. And in this last block, we're going to make a presentation of two different proposals from two different authors addressed at redesigning the election process for the, and these are proposals LAC 2019, seven, and 20, Africa The idea, and let me find my notes, the idea, is to have a comparative chart, which we included in the list on September 17, 2021, trying to explain the differences between the two. This was prepared together with the people of LACNIC, and I'll now share this with you. It has three columns. What you, the PDP currently has, what 2019-7 and 20. 29. After the presentation, which will be made by myself, the authors will have the opportunity to make comments of their proposals, to answer questions from the community. And after that, we'll have 20 minutes for questions and answers. After the Q&A, we will be measuring the temperature of the two in order to help the community decide what is the next step to follow. So I'll now share this chart with you. I hope you can see it. And basically, I will go line by line. There are not so many. We have the two authors with us. Ricardo Patara and Jordi. So let us look at line number three. In line number three, 2029 clarifies that moderators of PDP should not be part of LACNIC staff, then this is expanded. This restriction is then expanded. 2029 expands this to the members of the board. And 2019, 7, and B8, anyone involved in the development. So the Electoral Commission or the director himself, the chair himself. Lines four and five, the two proposals expand or rather clarify that the candidates should be subscribed to the mailing list at least six months prior to the announcement of the election and the beginning of the election process. Line number six has to do with the position. 2019-7 changes the language but maintains the spirit. 2029 does not. The duration of this position, 2029 does not make any changes. And 2019-7 speaks about two years alternately and without limit in terms of regarding re-elections. Who is entitled to vote? The two proposals state that it is the subscribers of the list, those who were subscribed to the list, and then this clarifies that 
this census includes those who had subscribed to the list six months prior to the announcement. Regarding information on the candidate, the PDP doesn't clarify much. In line nine, they both added a new requirement for the candidate. The bios are requested, but both are also requesting information regarding the experience in the policy development process. So this is not only about having experience uh, participating in LECNIC, but something that is more specific regarding the policy development process. Where is this call made? None of the two has any changes. LACNIC's responsibilities both state that the board is responsible. The board is responsible for the election process, and this responsibility can be delegated to an elections commission. And 2029 states that the election should take place prior to the first public policy forum of the year. Regarding voting, this should be done electronically, 2019-7. This will limit it to one person as far as possible. And 2029 states that this should also be limited to one subscriber per list. Regarding elections campaign, the PVP does not specify this, and both coincide that the list cannot be used for election campaign purposes. 2019-7 does not specify who should establish non-compliances, and 2029 states that non-compliances shall be dealt with by the board of LACNIC 2019-7 also states that it, the board is implicitly responsible for this. Ratification of the candidate, the candidate, this is line 14 and 15, 2020-9 maintains the spirit of the PVP particularly regarding that they will start with the functions after the end of the relevant public policy forum. So the elections take place. This is ratified in the first public forum. And at the end of the first public forum, the tenure of that moderator that was elected will start. 2019-7 changes the forum in this was ratified by the following forum. Jordi will then expand on this. I have all my notes here. Line 16, non-ratification of a candidate. It might occur that a candidate was not ratified or that there is no candidate. 2020-19 does not change this paragraph. 2019-7 maintains the spirit and then adds that the same methodology could be applied when a moderator cannot comply with his or her responsibilities. In other words, that the moderator, if a moderator does not comply with his or her responsibilities, can then appoint another moderator to complete the period until the next public policy forum. The appeals process for the election, the PVP does not state anything in this regard. 20, both versions state that this could be appealed. 2020-9 states that the process should take no more than four weeks. 2019-7 adds that in the case of fraud, uh, 
candidate can be invalidated or the entire election process can be cancelled and request the repetition thereof. So this is the table. The idea is, like I said at the beginning, that both proposals are addressed at the election process of the moderators. Therefore, we'll now this this table was already shared as I mentioned earlier, and now we will go to over to the discussion. Which of the two authors will start? Do we have Q and A's? What should we start with? Well, with George, if he wishes to start, because he has submitted uh, the oldest proposal. If he wants any clarification of the chart, yes, if you agree, maybe we should clarify something that you mentioned, and it is the issue of ratification. I'm not changing that. The next forum is the same because the election in both proposals is done before the forum. What I'm doing is I'm not making the ratification explicit because I think that ratifying when there's an election process and we are adding an appeals process, there's no need for ratification. Ratifying basically means approving. And the fact that it enters into force, as as I said in my text, because there were no appeals, implies that it was ratified. Am I clear? I'm saving time. Uh, I'm saving text that uh, was not needed. And this is important because this was one of the doubts of the impact analysis, but actually I'm not changing that. Now, what are the strong things in my proposal necessarily? I need to compare it against the other, obviously. And it is that in the first case, who will not be moderators? I think it's evident that if in the flow of approval of proposals where all the operation of the PVP there's somebody else implied that may somehow manipulate the process. It's not logical to have a, a candidate unless he specifies in how it w if uh, he's elected how it will come. And this is what happens to the electoral committee. It doesn't make sense to keep someone in the electoral committee and for that person to be elected. I think that goes without saying. Even if they're all members, there's we need to understand that uh, there's uh, a possibility for manipulation. Uh, for manipulation. So, as to the election, I'm not changing anything. And apparently the other proposal is not. However, the way the other proposal is drafted, the text is not correct in Spanish. In addition, they're talking about something that is impossible to show. And that's why I discussed it so much, because based on the impact analysis, I didn't want that possibility to happen. So we say, they say that uh, the elections will be electronic using mechanisms that, to the extent possible, may limit to one vote per person. I think it's not, it's clearly not enough to try to avoid one vote per person. They're speaking that the person is uh, um, suitable for voting because uh, the, the, the proposal doesn't say anything about uh, the characteristics that you need to be elected. And I have a couple of things. The use of the list for um, electoral campaigns, in my case, I'm clearly stating that it could imply the disqualification, while in the other case, you are obliging the uh, board to make a decision. And now they know that they can make that decision, so it's more explicit. Please be brief, Jordi. Yes, I still have two things. Okay, so in my proposal, I also established, and Tomas mentioned it, that if one of the moderators um, leaves or uh, get sick or doesn't respond uh, the mail. So we, the problem is solved because the same mechanism is applied to that case. And then finally, in my proposal, I solved the problem that if 
there's evidence of fraud, we have a solution, which in the other, and in the other proposal, we, we don't have such a solution. And with that, I think that I clarify all the items that I consider to be strong in my proposal. Obviously, my proposal has been discussed for a long time. Um, the other one, uh, um, uh, the origin was that uh, the author didn't like something about it, but but mine had a uh, better impact analysis. Now, let's see, Ricardo. Thank you. Tomas, Ariel, uh, good afternoon. Well, thank you for giving me this opportunity to clarify doubts. I think it's quite important to have this opportunity. My proposal, although the other author said that um, it's uh, it uh, it's older. The other proposal, this this proposal, and mine is more recent in 2020, and his proposal had many people against uh, his proposal had many people against it. So I took the most important items that the community uh, liked about that pro proposal about the selection process of the moderators. So I wrote the comments of by the community, the most important items, and that was reflected in the, so that is the proposal. That proposal had a lot, was very well received in the previous forum. The only thing that I did from there to here was to adjust two points that were commented in the last forum, but also in the impact analysis. And it was that my previous proposal mentioned that we wanted to have one vote per person. And they said that it would be very complicated to have one vote per person. And the suggestion was to change one vote per person that subscribes to the list. So the, the people, the so that have been in the list for six months. I'm sure that, uh, well, there may be people that uh, uh, joined the list uh, uh, one day ago. But the other issue that I, wa I changed and I adjusted uh, about uh, the impact analysis, but also in the forum, was the use of the list for campaigns. I have another term that was using the list for something that for I don't remember the exact point, but the suggestion was to clarify that that the use of the list could not sorry uh, electoral purposes. Yes, that was a term that it could be used for announcement and the way it's drafted there there was a doubt there. So the suggestion was to adjust that, and that's what I did to clarify that, well, you can't join the list for campaigns for a candidate. There we have the possibility for the board to follow the process uh, by the board itself or a body to accompany the process following all these issues. Uh, behavior not acceptable of a candidate, for instance, uh, if they are uh, uh, in, in a publicity campaign, all that is covered. So we have an electoral committee that does the work very well and uh, is uh, surveying things properly. I, I don't think that we need to be more bureaucratic when electing uh, the moderators. And that was one of the criticisms of the community in uh, the previous proposal that uh, this, uh, dra well, this version is much easier than the rest, but it made it very bureaucratic. So the idea was to listen to the community in the main uh, mm, issues and uh, to make it uh, easier, less bureaucratic, re less red type. Thank you, Ricardo. Jordi, I see that you are raising your hand. Let me see. Yes, I simply let me see if there are any questions. Well, I raised it when I saw that there was nothing else. 
I, I just want to clarify that it's not true that when my proposal at the time that Ricardo presented it, and you can see that in the list and its files, had many comments against it by the community. He was the only one that opposed. That's why it was so funny. So I said, well, we can uh, um, present the uh, proposal together. But it doesn't make sense to present two just because there's one or two paragraphs that you disagree with. We need to reach an agreement. We need to ask the community. But the, the yours, uh, his was the only opposition. Well, we have a Q&A question. Janina, let me read. Yes, Fernando Frediani says, the content of both proposals seems to be very close in all the items and very positive items for the PDP. What do you need for both authors to work together in one single proposal? If I can answer, two minutes, Geordie. No, less than that. Well, that was my first reaction when I saw the proposal. And the moderators and the staff are aware of that because they were copied. It doesn't make sense because it's against the code of conduct that instead of looking for consensus, talking with the author, then to do a proposal to compete against it. My hand is still stretched to take yours. Ricardo, now, well, the Fernando's comments are okay, and I see another comment in the same line, but I think that we reached a point that it really answers, it meets the demands of the community. I don't see any reason why we should delay the process any further and to seek a common proposal. I think that both proposals, though they have a specific differences, are, are quite close to what the community wants. So going back to the idea of having a common proposal would delay it even more. I think that we need to adjust the process the way the community wants it. How do you imagine, Ricardo, and I'm asking you specifically because Jordi says that he would be happy. How do you imagine that the consensus would be if there were two proposals that in a way end up uh, addressing the same thing? They're very similar and they differ in only just a few details. How do you imagine that uh, this would be defined uh, with the uh, two tracks, uh, with uh, two proposals uh, that are almost identical. Thank you, Ariel. I think that the authors are here to clarify the differences, the items that uh, raise more doubts by the community. And if we measure the temperature of uh, the room, or and we saw more or less support for one or for the other, and this could uh, indicate what the community really wants. Let me add something, may I? In that sense, thank you, Ricardo. Let me see, there's something that's very clear. I don't know now what proposal ends uh, earlier in the, those eight weeks, but the problem that we find is that what Ricardo is saying would be voting. It's not consensus because he's saying who has more support or which proposal has more support when really what you need to do is that the moderators need to decide independently. If one reaches consensus, it's implemented. If the one ranking second is um, uh, also accepted, then it's the latter that remains. That's what the PDP says. I don't know whether I would win or, or lose. It's the same, but it's absolutely preposterous. And so it's not only myself that says this. Right from the outset, I stretched out my hand. My hand is stretched out. And at the stage we are, it is pointless. If we're three months or, months or six months, we have to have a new version. 
So let's go over to the Q&A. There is a comment from Marcos, which is quite similar to the previous comment. I'm going to read this out. Because the two proposals are similar, the two authors, could they work together to have a unified proposal? And I'll go on with the next one. I'll go on with the other one, question. Although many of the points of each proposal use different words, they end up having the same meaning. Based on the comparative table, could we only separate those points where there is a divergence, which I think these are only few, so we can have an opinion that is more focused on the community regarding such points? Well, we could do this in the comparative table, and if you wish, I can share this with you, this with you once again. So, can you see the table? Yes, we can see it. So, I think that those points where there is a discrepancy, these are not so many. Some clarify things further. Let me check my notes. Thomas, let me say the ones that I see at first sight. First, that the, uh, the elections committee could be moderator in one and not in the other. Who could be moderators? Or who could not be moderators? Who could not be moderators? They should not be part of LACNIC staff, nor of LACNIC's board. So this is one of the points. Another point would be this one over here on the elections campaign. Here, non-compliance would be dealt with by LACNIC's board according to 2020-9. And in 2019-7 of Geordie, this not specify who should then deal with these non-compliances. It has been clarified. It states that the board is the ultimate body that is responsible for this. So it would be the same. Well, the difference is that in my case, it clearly specifies what the, the, the punishment or the penalty could, would be. And we did not include it here, that's right. The lack of a mechanism for absence of a moderator, or so the difference is in Geordie's version expands the point on if a moderator cannot comply with the responsibilities for whatever reason. And appeal of the election process, the difference in 2020 slash nine states that in, in the event of an appeal, the process should be led by LACNIC's board. It doesn't specify the reason and 2019 slash seven states that if there is sufficient evidence of fraud, this act could be cancelled, so prior to the election. And even validating, he corrects himself through, during the entire elections process, the process could be invalidated and repetition requested. So if a candidate wins and then fraud is detected, then that candidate will be invalidated. I think 2019-7 is more specific, and 2020-9 speaks about the possible need to appeal the process. I think there are three points then. So, Thomas, if you agree, 
Let us look at the Q&A. Janina? So let me read. We have from Guillermo Pagliero. He is asking, or he writes, can you? He, I think that it's quite logical that the two authors should work on the proposal that has the greatest support in order to solve the issue of a unified proposal. Shall I go on? Yes, please. Martin Antonio Macia states, in the, at the hub in Pergamino, we think that the difference should, should be set aside and they should work together. Proposals really are urgent and eventually they would have been approved as a fast process and then they should last as long as required. I'm answering that question to Frediani. The Center of Women in Technology. I think that the best scenario for this discussion is that the two authors should reach an agreement in order to unify the proposals and present one common proposal because there are a lot of similarities between the two and I see no need of making the community reach consensus on this. If this agreement should happen, it would be a good example of teamwork for the benefit of the community. Center of Women in Technology, CMT. I clarify that this opinion is stated on my own behalf. I'm Erika Vega. And Fernando's question was already answered by Thomas. I would like to know if Fernando would like to do this now because maybe if another what you suggest and I have nothing against that but I insist once again right from the outset my idea was and I did this specifically the moderators will recall that I didn't mind who was the author of one of the other proposals but the idea is to join the two etc This table is available to all in the same link that we sent in the mailing list. Are there any more questions? There are no more questions. We have six more minutes if you wish to express your opinions. I think the community has stated their opinions in extensively if you wish to make further comments. Please feel free to do so. Janina, are there more comments? Fernando Frediani, he says, dear friends, it would be a pity if the two proposals were maintained as they are without any adjustments and without reaching consensus. Ricardo, did you raise your hand? Just a brief comment. This is in reply to what Fernando was saying. I agree with him. We have dedicated a lot of time to this proposal and to similar proposals. Let me state what I said at the beginning. The proposal I'm making was presented at the last forum. It reached quite a lot of approval uh, by the community and only two adjustments were requested. It's not that, that we ran out of adjustments because the requested adjustments at the previous forum were made. And this is a proposal 
that we have now included in the list. Yes, the same in my case. The adjustment that one had was, had to do with the impact analysis, and the other one had to do with election campaigns or election purposes. And this should not be otherwise, because the two stem from the original proposal. And the other adjustment was that I maintained until the last forum. I was the only one who was against. And I stated that the moderators, after having been elected once, they could not be re-elected unless there is a period in between. And at the last forum, they thought that if the moderators were re-elected constantly, there was nothing wrong with that. So I withdrew that point. So let us thank personally the two authors. I thank the two authors personally, both Ricardo and Jordi. In the meantime, we spoke with Ariel. And we said, well, I think Carlos is falling asleep. But we decided that we will now go over to measure the temperature. And we will continue discussing this. So let's go over to measure the temperature of LAC 2019 slash 7 version 8 election process PDP moderators. Those who are in favor, against, or abstention. And we'll then go over to the conference room in Uruguay. Those who are in favor 2019-7 election procedure, please raise your hand if you're in favor. Thank you. In the room in Uruguay, those who are against, please raise your hand. Thank you very much. Those who abstain, please raise your hand. So let's wait 10 more minutes for the poll. 10 seconds, not 10 minutes. But Nicolas Antonella doesn't like the, the sandwich. He doesn't like the hourglass. I wanted to give just uh, the same time to everybody to be fair. So let's uh, close the poll. Thirty-four percent in favor, fifteen percent against, fifty-one percent uh, abstained. Okay. So now. Let's uh, gorge the temperature of proposal 2029. Let's see the poll. Poll six. Jean Paul Belmont. <laughs> so, those of you online and in uh, the hub in Pergamino, yes, I know that he has worse jokes. It's not the worst. I'm being serious. I'm serious. So let's uh, measure in uh, the people here in Uruguay, those in favor, please raise your hands. Thank you. And the people against, please raise your hands in the room. 
Thank you. And abstentions in uh, through Zoom. Uh, raise your hands too. Ten more seconds for LAC 2029 version 4, the election of the PDP chairs. We are on time, right? We, we have to open the mic. That's the only thing that's left. So we can close this. Poll 6. 45 in favor, 5% against, almost the same number of abstentions in both, 51 and 50%, almost the same. Again, well, the figures here, well, maybe we have just a few people, but those in favor, please let us know in uh, the mailing list. Before we go, uh, sorry, Thomas, but before we go to the next session, I'm asking the authors, because you may understand that this situation is beyond what we understand that is written in the PDP, and we want to find the way out. So my question is, would the authors be happy putting together a working group, adding more people in addition to the two of you to solve this problem. I, yes, I agree. Yes, I agree to both Jordi and uh, Ricardo agreed. Thank you. So uh, anyway, and this is uh, Jordi that's speaking. I think that you don't have any situations against the PDP. If we follow it strictly, you need to make a decision after the eight weeks of the first, and I don't know which is the first and which is the second, because it depends on when the last versions were drafted or were submitted, and then to make a decision about the, the next. So this is just as a, it's equivalent. Now we have a transfer policy. Now let's imagine that in one year somebody wants to change it. The fact that they're separate in time, the one in force and the next one, three months or uh, three years or one uh, day it doesn't change. Am I clear? Yes. But in this case, I have absolutely no problems in finding uh, a solution. Thank you, Jordi. Let's go to the open Q&A. The open Q&A. Well, we have some time for questions or for comments. We can hear your feedback. If you have any proposals uh, about the forum, please use the Q&A panel or raise your hands if you are here in uh, the auditorium. Jordi is raising his hand. Jordi, you have two minutes. No, less than that. What I always beg the communities, participating in the forum is not enough, where you really ripen the proposals and avoid reaching uh, proposals that compete absurdly, is that instead of having a proposal in a proposal that the uh, opposition of a uh, only one person, well, then I, I can't change a proposal unless for me it's evident that the person who is opposes is right if I don't have anybody else opposing. I think I was clear. That's all. Thank you. Any other comments? Not yet. I don't know. Jordi whether Jordi has raised his hand or it's uh, 
No, now he put it down. I'm receiving... I'm being told uh, that people are complaining about uh, Thomas Lynch and his performance here. I was told that the glass hour looks uh, like uh, an inflatable balloon. Well, people are just too envious. Yes, indeed. Open mic, open mic. Yes, we have 80 people and 31 panelists. This is a marathon, a marathonic session. Terrible. Unless you, th you can think of anything. I want, uh, why did you, why are, are you all dressed up? Are you Carlos? You, I know you admire him. Well, I, I can't explain why. My apologies for this moment. We are. Uh, wrap up this public policy forum, LACNIC 36. We really thank the authors, the staff of LACNIC. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with us. And all those who participated and uh, those who are engaged in the list also will uh, resume our discussions in the list. And then now we'll have the difficult questions for Mr. Thomas Lynch. Well, in view of for the sake of time, there's a presentation by Janina that's very, uh, that's closely related to the forum. So Janina, please go ahead. Should I start now? I don't know whether Sandra was going to say anything. Well, yes, I think that everybody here wants to thank you for chairing the forum the way you do it, very dynamically, very entertaining. I also wanted to thank the, the uh, um, uh, people who developed the proposals and everybody that was connected. I want to 